Hello and welcome to chapter 19.2 on systems and internal organs of the fish. As you might be able to hear, there is a little bit of a storm going on. kind of creates an ambient atmosphere to talk about colder aquatic things. So that's kind of interesting. And um, I hope you enjoy this uh, sub-chapter and this section on systems and internal organs of a fish. Unlike other aquatic mammals, like the whale, the dolphin, uh, taking oxygen directly from water is possible for a fish through their gills. Consider what the chemical formula for water is. It's H2O. They will strip the oxygen away from water, replace it with a waste product of carbon, and allow the hydrogen to go away. And those are some of the little bubbles that you see sometimes. And uh, the gills, of course, facilitate this for special organs that allow for oxygen carbon exchange. A typical fish has eight gills. Each gill consists of a curved arch of cartilage called the gill arch. So you see the cartilage here. And uh, there will be two rows of long, narrow gill filaments. These filaments are kind of like the filter. And you have um, beneath this operculum, and I don't have it pictured here, there's a gill chamber which leads to the pharynx, which leads to a fish's throat. Ironically, the fish actually breathes in the water, and it goes out their gills. Now, uh, that seems kind of counterintuitive to me. I thought for whatever reason they breathed in through their gills and out through their mouth, but, um, but they actually... Um, do otherwise. The gills are protected by another layer called the gill rakers. And so here is a gill raker. You can see these are vein-like projections that strain food and debris out of the water. So uh, nothing can make it to the gill filaments, which actually do the filtration, except it goes past the gill rakers and um, all these things are filtered uh, out of the water. So the fish doesn't get any gunk. Circulatory system. Fish have a closed system of arteries, veins, and capillaries broadly similar to the system that we have. Um, very similar to ours, uh, fish actually have oxygen transported by hemoglobin in the blood. They also have white blood cells. Who knew fish could get sick? But they do need white blood cells to protect them from uh, various things around them. Uh, whether it be viruses or bacterium or other illnesses that they can pick up through the water. There are waterborne illnesses. Now, if we had a fish's system of blood vessels and uh, their whole circulatory system, we would not survive. Why? There's some very important differences. Besides size, I'm, I'm leaving that out. First of all, fish have no lungs. That makes them terribly dissimilar to us. We use lungs for our place of oxygen exchange with carbon dioxide. Fish, of course, do not have those. Fish also have a two-chambered heart. And so you can see um, here that these are uh, the capillaries um, through which uh, after respiration occurs. Respiration is what uh, causes the capillaries to fill with oxygen. It goes to the rest of the body, and then um, it extends all throughout the body, and then it goes back to the heart where it gets pumped back out again. It has to take a pit stop before the body at the gills. Now, our body's completely different. Our heart pumps um, out in two different places. It pumps out one to the lungs, and then when the blood comes back, it pumps it back out to the body. It takes two trips. Fish is a one-trip kind of thing. Stops along the way to get oxygen, keeps going. We stop to get oxygen, come back, and then go, go out after we have the oxygen. Excretory system, nervous systems. Water-soluble metabolic waste are filtered through kidneys, although some fish have the special ability to filter waste through their gills. Because fish spend their entire lives in the water, fluid balance is a tremendous obstacle for them. Now, 
this is kind of outside of our frame of thinking, so you do have to put your thinking cap on here. Freshwater fish, you got to think about their salt content. Freshwater fish constantly gain water because their bodies are saltier than the water around them. And remember, if something is salty, it wants to, it, it naturally wants to fill it with water. And so water naturally rushes from the outside to the inside of the fish, making the fish kind of bloated with water. Saltwater fish have the opposite problem. They have less salt than the water around them, and so the water wants to leave and go out to the salt around them. And so saltwater fish have the issue of becoming too, um, too, like, losing too much water, I should say. Um, crinkly, almost. And because of that, they have to change their, um, excretion. Freshwater fish, because they're constantly gaining water, excrete out a lot of water, but not a lot of salt. Saltwater uh, fish, since they lose water, they do not excrete out a lot of water, but they do excrete out a lot of salt. Fish don't have nearly as complex brains as mammals, but they do have a well-designed sense organ. This organ is called a lateral line. It is a system of special nerves through which a, a fish can see vibrations, sense, sense vibrations, that's to say, in the water around them. And so um, it would be very similar to, you know, if you have your feet on the ground and your arms on the table and all of a sudden something around you, you know, shook. And you're like, what in the world? Who's walking by? Um, that's kind of like a fish. They sense vibrations in the water. And most of the time, if you're a small fish, you're going to be like, bye. But if you're a big fish, you're going to be like, hi. Um, and you're going to, of course, look to eat whatever's next to you. Don't you love Finding Nemo? I recently watched Finding Nemo and Finding Dory with my daughter, Raylan, and she didn't really get what was going on, but uh, she thought it was kind of cool, all the blues and all the different colors. Um, the reproductive system of fish is kind of unique. Um, of course, reproductive organs, they're known as gonads of a fish. They're unique compared to mammals. Uh, fish do not have internal fertilization. They have external fertilization. Fish will release their egg and sperm cells through uh, what's called the urogenital opening. And the female fish will spawn in, in some sort of secluded area, lay their eggs, known as a row, and another male fish is going to dump the milt, which contains the sperm, over those eggs. Some of them get fertilized, some of them don't. And then the fish promptly forget about um, their newly fertilized eggs and leave them. They wouldn't even know them if they saw them. Now, that's, that's a highly different story than Finding Nemo, these clownfish who carefully watch over each and every one of their eggs and give them all names, and then at the very end, after the big mean old fish went <laughs> and destroyed them all, um, and there was one broken one at the bottom, he cared for him his whole life, that, that just doesn't happen. Um, but fish eggs are very important in the ecosystem. Many fish, of course, eat those eggs. And many fish hatch, hatch too, and those fish are eaten as well. Fish feed other sea life, mammals, bears, humans. And so, of course, we need a lot of fish. So it's a very good thing that fish don't really care for their young. They just try to have as many as possible because fish are a really important part of our society. Um, lastly, some unique organs. Fish have many unique organs that anim other animals do not have. Um, take a look at the anglerfish. Um, it has a unique organ that you can see. It's pretty scary. It's like something you might see out of a nightmare. The swim bladder allows for a fish to adjust the buoyancy, just move up and down without even swimming. Um, it allows for special gas exchange to be able to rise or sink in the water. That always fascinated me as a kid. We had goldfish, and the goldfish would move up and down without even doing anything like swimming. I just astounded me. But they have a swim bladder. An electric generating organ is used to generate electrical current, sometimes to light things, sometimes to stun or kill prey, like the um, anglerfish. 
Um, and those are some unique organs that fish can carry that, of course, we do not have. And that is the end of section 19.2. Make sure you do your section review questions on page 400, numbers 1 through 6. And that is the end of this video. I will see you guys for 19.3 tomorrow. Adios.